big debate this morning about whether or not cutting prices is smart in this environment. Where are you right now? Yeah, I mean, look, um, I've always been a big believer that, that this company is going to be valued more on, on top line growth than on profitability, uh, certainly near term profitability. I still believe that. Uh, but the magnitude of the, the, the loss that they're guiding to for this coming year is, is pretty dramatic. I mean, they're, they're, they're coming in about $800 million short of where the street was in terms of, of the EBITDA loss that they're guiding to. That's, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, indeed. Yeah, we're going to be looking for more on, on, that, on, on that front. But on the pricing side, when you're dealing with such uh, freight and commodity cost pressure, um, is cutting prices smart? There are some on the street this morning who argue it is, uh, that they have relatively low churn, and that is going to stimulate some new wave of demand in the years to come. Yeah, I mean, look, they're certainly zigging when a lot of other companies are zagging. We're, we're hearing about most companies uh, raising prices as a result of supply chain and commodities, and these guys are, are lowering prices. Um, at the end of the day, I think the street's going to give them a pass uh, on the losses for this year, but I, I do think it is indicative of the fact that, that the pandemic is fundamentally over. I don't think they'd be cutting these prices if, if they were sort of in this, this deficit from a supply-demand perspective that they've been in for the last year and a half. At the end of the day, I think that that as you think about people that are using this as a pandemic play, the honeymoon's over, right? It, it doesn't mean that this can't be a very effective marriage long term, but there is that transition period. Uh, and I think this price cut is a big part of that. I'm, I'm curious to hear you say that you think the pandemic is over, especially considering that we are hearing more and more from some of these companies that are going to be doing hybrid work for a lot longer because of the Delta variant. So I'm wondering if you think that the Delta variant is, in fact, going to delay the advantages of the pandemic for Peloton, and also whether you think there are going to be some people who are just permanently converted away from gyms to, to these, uh, you know, high-priced high devices in their homes. I mean, I have a Peloton, and for me, I'm never going to back to a gym because it converted me to this new mode of working out. Sure. And I'm, and I'm the same way. Um, I, I am a big believer and continue to be a big believer that there is a long term secular trend away from uh, in gym fitness and, and towards at home fitness. And I, and I continue to think Peloton is, is the leader in that respect. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that it's going to be as easy as it's been over the last couple of years or a couple of years during the pandemic by any perspective. And thus far, I don't think there's a whole lot of evidence that the Delta variant and the spread of that variant has been a positive for Peloton. Uh, the fourth quarter, we saw a slowdown in, in terms of, of new subscribers. And what they're guiding to for this upcoming quarter uh, is also a significant step down. Uh, we'll see if Delta ultimately helps them. Uh, but I think fundamentally, uh, they're going to really have to work for their money uh, much more so than they have over the last two years.